So the big things we just looked at were the, uh, the Google and the Bing Webmaster tools to see some of our traffic. Again, there's a lot of data we could look at within this analytics and such, but we only have so much time, especially in one day. So I want to look at a couple of other things also. Um, the one consolation is I am going to be offering uh, a class coming up soon. I believe it's called Google for Advanced Users. If you take that class, we're going to cover Google Plus and Google Analytics again, and we should be able to get into it a little deeper than we got into it in this class. So I'll look it up a little later, but look in the catalog for Google for Advanced Users with my name, because I think there's another one that's called something like Google more than a search engine from another instructor. I don't know what he or she teaches there. But if you look up Google for advanced users, I teach that, and I will be talking more about Google Analytics, because this is only three weeks long instead of four. What I want to look at is rec uh, some recommendations, some concrete recommendations, some concrete recommendations for people that are using a WordPress site. So just let me get a quick show of hands again, just to focus this content. Raise your hand if you use a WordPress site. Okay, less than I thought. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you some recommendations in WordPress, but this will still apply to your site if it's not a WordPress site, because these concepts still are useful to any kind of site you have. So I am going to log into my WordPress site. If you've got a WordPress site, you can log into it. If you don't, to just follow along for a moment. I'm going to close some of these links. So I've got a WordPress site. It's pretty new. It doesn't have that much traffic. One of the big things I recommend with WordPress is to, is, is to install a couple of very useful plugins. Plugins give you these extra features that don't come built into WordPress. So under the plugins screen, These are the ones I recommend if you've got WordPress. Jetpack. Jetpack adds extra features to your WordPress site, such as the ability to share your content to social media automatically. If I post something, I post a new blog on my site with this option, with one of the features of Jetpack, I can then publicize, which is that I post something and it automatically then also gets shared to my Facebook and my Twitter and my uh, Instagram and my Facebook. So I post once on my site and it automatically goes to my social media because social media is very important nowadays for SEO. It's the SEM aspect of things, search engine marketing. The Jetpack plugin gives me a bunch of extra options And like I'm saying, one of them is called enhanced, enhanced Distribution. It sends out your content to these other distribution channels. You can have the ability for people to comment on your site and manage it a little better. Uh, it has pretty good spam protection. This Jetpack plugin could protect your comments. So if you do activate comments on your site, you will have less spam. Yes? Okay, the thing about plugins is once you've installed them, so you go look at plugins, installed plugins, if the plugin is not active, do you have a button that says activate? Make sure you activate it and go through that process because you can install plugins, but they may or may not be active, so make sure you activate the plugin. And again, if people need individual help to set them up, we can do that a bit later. One of the other good things about the, the Jetpack plugin is if your website is not mobile friendly, with the click of a button, it'll make it mobile friendly. 
So mobile friendliness is now becoming one of the signals that the search engines pay attention to about your site. If your site looks good on a mobile device and your competitors doesn't, your site has an edge. Your site will rank better. Right now, probably a month ago at the most, two at the most, Google put out their latest webmaster recommendations and such, and they said, if your site is mobile friendly, that's going to help you. How do you know your website is mobile friendly? Well, if you go to your website on your, on your mobile device and everything is really small, most likely it's not mobile friendly. If you have to pinch to zoom in, most likely it's not mobile friendly. If your website fills the screen nice and perfectly, then it's mobile friendly. It's been designed so that people can view your big old website on this little screen. Another way to test if it's mobile friendly or not is on a regular computer here. I'm looking at my site right here in the full-sized web browser. If I then resize my if I then resize my web browser screen, there it is full size. If I start to resize it and then the screen conforms like here, notice what happened? The sidebar moved to the top and then the content moved to the center. That's known as responsive web design. It's responding to this different size of my monitor. That's, a, that's another example. Most likely your site is mobile friendly. So right here, it sort of responded to the size of a tablet. It looks best on a tablet. If I was on a smaller screen, if I keep shrinking it like a little cell phone, notice how that changed. It removed some of the superfluous background. Right? There was a beige background there and it's just focusing on the main content and the items are shrinking and they're arranging themselves tall and thin like my mobile device. This is one way to do a quick check. It's not the most accurate. But this is a way to do a quick check to see if your site is mobile friendly. Notice now the sidebar has become a little button that people can open when, it's, when you've got a nice big screen like that. Well, the sidebar is visible there. But when you've got a small screen, it shrinks down to accommodate that. So mobile friendliness going forward is going to be an important factor. Many of your sites probably are already mobile friendly, especially if you use WordPress or Weebly or Wix. They oftentimes have that built in. If you're not sure, check your settings. Look around in there to see mobile friendly activated, yes or no. You might have the option, but it may not be active. And if you've got WordPress, If you've got WordPress and you use Jetpack, you can turn it on right there. Our particular theme is already mobile friendly, but if yours isn't, you can turn on mobile theme and automatically it'll convert yours to mobile friendly. Not perfectly, like a carefully crafted mobile theme, but better than, than not, and the search engines like that. This is all these are all settings from the Jetpack plugin. These are like uh, extra features added to my WordPress site thanks to the Jetpack plugin. Another one that is helpful is Photon. This speeds up your site in that in a very it's very technical but basically it speeds up your site because it has copies of your pictures on the WordPress server, a commonly used server. So when someone visits your site, and if the picture is already on the person's computer, your site loads faster. So if someone's just been browsing the web in a normal fashion, they've probably come across WordPress sites. If you turn on Photon, your pictures will be on the WordPress network, and then your site will download faster because the person already has the picture. Speed is one of the factors that the search engines also look at. If your pictures, if you've got lots of pictures that are slowing down your site, that could hurt your SEO because the search engines basically are trying to show the best quality content and the best experience. Mobile friendliness has nothing to do with content, does it? Your content is still there if it's mobile friendly or not. But the search engines are also going to start to pay more attention to user experience. Is, it, is the site pleasant to use on a mobile? Is the site loading quickly? If those things are not 
something that you're paying attention to and your competitor is, their site could get higher ranking than yours. Is Jetpack, can you get that it's not on your list right now? I went into it's like the other one to plug in and I added it to Dylan. I couldn't find it. Oh, that, that's odd. It should let you find it. So you are seeing, so you are seeing plugins right. and you are seeing add right. new. It may be. I, please do. I have to cap. I didn't cap one. Really. You shouldn't need to. So if it doesn't show up I here automatically, it. on the top right, did you search here? Jetpack. Yeah. Oh, well, where it said keywords. Well, it doesn't look like that, but yes, that's what I did. Okay, we'll look during during the break because it should let you find and install Jetpack. So Jetpack is one of the uh, plugins that I recommend. It's got features that help your SEO. Now, if you don't have Jet, if you don't have a WordPress site, some of these things still make sense. Is your Weebly site mobile friendly? Is your is your Squarespace site mobile friendly? Is your Wix site does it download quickly? Those things still apply, even though you might not have a little plugin that handles that. You need to think about that and incorporate that on your specific site. If you're using a if you're using Dreamweaver to make your site, did you make a, a, a mobile-friendly style sheet or a mobile-friendly site? These concepts still apply. Um, these 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 concepts still apply to any kind of site that you make. I just focus on WordPress because it's got about 26% of the global market share, which is hundreds of millions of websites globally. So that's Jetpack. Another one that I recommend is A Kismet. This one helps stop that spam. This one helps you deal with that issue about if you're going to have commenting on your site, which may help you, you're going to want to deal with the spammers. Akismet is, is great because it taps you into this network from WordPress.com where it, where it can quickly analyze and determine what are spam comments and you'll never have to deal with them. They just get deleted. Because millions of people use Akismet, millions of data is being gathered about spam comments. So then these negative comments won't even show up. These low quality spam comments will not even show up. Akismet will stop them. And again, if we have bad links to our site, that'll hurt us. Akismet helps prevent some of these bad comments, which could be full of bad links. And here's the big one, which I'll spend a little more time on. Here's a plugin called WordPress SEO. This is by the company Team Yoast. There's many plugins out there for WordPress that will help you wrangle all of the SEO features of your site. Because remember, back in day one, we compiled a list of keywords. What do we do with them? We're about to talk about it now. WordPress SEO is one of the big ones that helps you actually add these keywords and such to your site. It gives you these features that are not available in the default WordPress. This one is a famous one. Another famous one is called the All-in-One SEO Pack. I think that's what it's called. That one's a popular one. I haven't used it personally. Some of my colleagues have. They like it. Either of these should work. WordPress SEO by Yoast or All-in-One SEO Pack. Either one should work but don't turn them both on. Don't use both of them. They're going to try to do the same thing and they're going to conflict. So choose one or the other. I usually recommend the one from Yoast, Team Yoast, and I'll show you how that one works in just a moment. The point of this plugin is for you to be able to apply your keywords and other metadata that is not readily visible in WordPress. So if I go over to my, after I've downloaded it and installed it and activated it, now when I go over to my posts, my blog, here's my blog posts, and now I have some new columns at the top here. SEO, SEO title, meta description, focus keyword. 
this particular blog post here has a rating of OK. It goes from not rated to poor, I think there's one more, and then OK, and then good. So a green dot means that this page was optimized the best. And the thing with SEO is you do have to go in and optimize every page, every important page at least. But in short, every page, not just the home page. Because you've got a lot of content, and it might not just be on your home page. It might be in a blog post. It might be in the contact page. Everything should be optimized. You might think, that's a lot of work. It is, honestly. SEO can be a lot of work. It's an ongoing thing. If you're not going to invest your time and effort, you should be hiring someone that will and will do it right. But hopefully learning things from this class, you will be able to get started. So this particular post has been optimized to, to OK. The best one is good, but I shoot for either OK or good. If a, if a section of the site is poor, because there's two, there's two bad ones and two good ones. I forget what one of the bad ones is. But if it's one of the bad ones, you need to work to get that higher up. And I'll show how in a moment. Yes? Whatever works, you don't want to overload a page with a lot of pictures just to put a picture. But I would say one picture per post is, is good. That's true. Well, the problem with having a lot of pictures could be that the pictures are not optimized themselves. So if I say, okay, only use five pictures, but those five pictures can, came straight from your digital camera and are the full size 20 megapixel image, you're still shooting yourself in the foot because those five pictures are so big, they're still going to slow you down. Let's say you optimized your pictures to good file size and you put 20. That's not going to hurt you because those 20 pictures could download quickly. So I can't give you a hard value of how many to use because it really goes hand in hand with are those pictures sized down to a good reasonable size? Are they optimized and saved so that they download quickly? So you don't have to get too hung up about how many pictures. You should get hung up on are those pictures optimized? Will they download quickly? Yeah, if they're already there and then they're the original pictures right out of the camera, yeah, I would delete those. Mm -hmm. I would first optimize them and save them on the computer and then delete them from your site and then right away upload them to replace them. Don't delete them and then spend a few days to optimize them with no pictures on your page and then upload them. Are you ever using those infographics? Yeah. Yeah, infographics. Again, uh, you create these infographics, you put them on your site, but then you still share them on Twitter and Pinterest and so forth. As a blog post. As a blog post, yeah. So this Yoast plugin gives me the ability to, to craft, to optimize a page at a time. So let's, I'm going to go in to edit that post to show you exactly what, what I'm editing. Yoast gives me this section here, WordPress SEO by Yoast, General Page Analysis, Advanced and Social. It gives me a preview of what a search result would look like. And then a way to add a focus keyword. This is your keyword or your description. I mean your keyword or your long tail keyword. Let me go to an example before I optimized one, actually. This one has not been optimized yet. It's, it's gray. So this particular site, I'm showing off some of my artwork. So I've got this, uh, I've got this drawing. So I've got the drawing. It's relatively big. It looks big, but it's been optimized with a good file size, so it downloads quickly. Got some text, more text. It's just a picture, but I've also written text because it's still about your content. It's still about text. Even if you are an artist, you're not going to do yourself a good service by just making a gallery of your pictures. 
that's not going to help you. You're still going to need text. So I managed to write here 200 words about that one picture. Uh, it actually went quickly. You can write 100 words, 200 words, relatively quickly. If you, if you care about what you're uploading, you should be able to write 100 words at least. And then, down on the section here, to optimize, this is what it's going to look like if someone searches. It's going to say, enter Victor's art. That's not the best um, title that appears there. The name of this piece is called Enter. But this makes people think like, oh, this is the landing page, this is the, this is the home page. Not that it's this particular artwork, so I have to fix that. It then grabbed the first few words that it found in the blog post, and then it cut it off here unceremoniously. It grabbed the first few words and it put it up there. So if you didn't write something crafted here, well crafted, it might look weird, like it does for mine. Welcome home, who lives here? Notice it ran those words together. Because it simply took, the search engine would simply take this that I wrote here, ignoring that it's its own line, and then ram it next to who. So if I don't craft this, this is what I'm going to show up to people on search. It's not the most optimized. So the way I would do this is I would think, what's the big keyword or phrase about this screen of my site, keeping in mind the totality of my site? Everything that I've written in my marketing strategy, what I've written in the keyword uh, assignment, what I've written in the company profile, and start to craft this one page. My site is about my artwork, maybe selling some of these original drawings. This particular page has one particular work, and it's, it was for Halloween, so it's like this uh, scary door in some sort of castle or something. And so this might be a good post, depending on what I also wrote here. It was October, the perfect time to draw something spooky. So, okay, I have an idea here. Spooky drawing. As I'm typing here, it's giving me a live search result. These are examples of what people are searching for. Spooky drawings, spooky drawing for Halloween, drawing spooky trees, spooky castle drawing. I like that one. Spooky Castle Drawing is the keyword I'm going to focus on, my efforts, to further optimize this screen. So then now, based on that, this title of simply enter doesn't quite work. So I would be writing something a little bit more along those lines. Let's see, did I draw this? I drew this in with pen. So I'll write here. And I'm writing this in capital letters because this is what's going to appear in the search results. So we castle drawing in pen. The preview shows me that that's what's going to appear there. Now I definitely have given the user that's searching, perhaps for some of these words, more of an incentive to click on my, on my link. Um, when it was simply called enter, that was meaningless to most people. But here that's someone searching for drawings, spooky castle, pen drawings, my page could appear. Again, if you have Squarespace or some other, you won't have this exact kind of thing, but you'll have somewhere in your control panel to set your your meta title or your meta description. That's what I'm just doing here. This plugin makes it easier because it plugs me into a search that'll give me feedback right away. But you'll still be able to do this yourself. If you've got something like, like Wix, you would go to Google and do some searching there and see what suggestions appear. And that'll help me then craft the title. Yes? Um, so say you had a, a pencil as well on the same page, and you wanted, like, in your keywords, it says spooky castle drawing in pen. Would you have to write it all out again, spooky castle drawing in pen?
pencil as well, or could you just put pencil in there? No, I wouldn't. Uh, that's now we're starting to unfortunately get into keyword stuffing. Just because I've got all of these concepts of keywords does not mean I should apply them all, all the time in my title. A longer title eventually is going to get cut off. So if I start to write more stuff like uh, Spaghetti Grind for October, um, perfect for kids, blah, 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 eventually it's going to cut off. So you don't want to go that far because it's going to then now start to look spammy. So you have those keywords of pen and pencil, but that's why also we've got the meta description. So within the title is something succinct that explains what this page is about, why someone might want to click on it, and then you further elaborate in the meta description. In the meta description, currently this took a snippet of, of my artsy prose, but then I want to also write here, for example, um, drawn in pen, or a drawing in pen, with pencil shading, this, and just keep going. Write something in the description, and it's going to tell me what my limit is here. Again, I cannot write a whole paragraph here. I have a limit of 156 characters or so that will appear on the search result, because you can keep writing and writing and adding all your purple prose, and then eventually it, you run out of space and it cuts off, which doesn't look as good. When it cuts off, most likely it'll cut you off mid word. So if you're able to craft your message within that space, then that will be much more optimized. And notice, I don't have to literally always say spooky castle drawing. I'm going to use the word drawing, but it doesn't have to be preceded with spooky castle. But I'm going to see about if I can apply spookier castle within the rest of the sentence in a natural way. That's what it is nowadays, the concept, in a natural ways, organic ways, not artificial that I'm always going to write spooky castle drawing. Do you like my spooky castle drawing? I like to draw spooky castle drawings. You know, I'm not going to be specifically forcing those keywords in that same phrase over and over. So I'm writing here, a drawing in pen, perfect for Halloween, You can more, write more than one sentence here, you're, as long as you're within the character count. A drawing in pen, perfect for Halloween. This spooky castle beckons you. Beacons? No, beckons. Right? Isn't that beacons? Like a beacon in the sea, in the ocean? Beacons. Yeah, beacons. Oh, yeah, that's it. beacons. 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 Okay. This, this spooky castle beckons you to enter, but you may not return. So I'm not going to also artificially try to always be thinking in marketing speak in, in, in literal keywords all the time. After all, the search engines still say uh, optimize for people, and the search engines will follow. So I am writing here, I'm, I'm putting in those keywords, not in the exact order, not necessary. I've got drawing, I've got spooky castle, and then, you know, for the people, I still have 51 characters. If it's appropriate, I would think about some sort of call to action, CTA, that's a big keyword in this world of SEO and marketing, CTA, a call to action, which means something that convinces a person to do something. A call to action in my email newsletter might be, don't hesitate, use this coupon, get 10% off. That's a very clear call to action. Use this coupon to get 10% off. Think about if you can apply any CTAs to your description here. What more incentive could you get people to click? Um, you know, I could say, this piece is on sale for a limited time. That's a call to action. It could be more concrete. Uh, I am saying limited time. That entices people to buy now because it's limited. I don't want to miss it. I I'm stayed within my character limit, so I'm good. Um, 
I could of course develop a more a more powerful call to action that takes a more effort and and uh, practice to really think like a marketer to to convince people to do something that's what all advertising is that's what all marketing is to convince you that yes you are hungry for that new hamburger yes you do need that new suit yes you do need that new shampoo because you don't smell so good so all that marketing is about convincing you of something think about it if you see any marketing like the stuff that we've got up there you know take these classes get these office skills get a job um, so it is a lot to think about but I'm using these keywords to help me craft my meta description here because now that's what's going to appear on a search and perhaps that'll entice people to click more than what it was by default Yes. So with your keyword being spooky castle drawing, how likely is that to draw in somebody who's searching for castle drawing or spooky drawing or you know some variation of those three words? Those people that are searching for those variations, I could appear for them. But again, this is just a piece of the puzzle. <clears throat> in addition to my social media and such, I'm going to share this on Pinterest as well. And then, therefore, from that traffic, popularity beats, breeds popularity, the search engine C, he's also getting traffic from Pinterest. That could be then helping my SEO. And then, when someone searches castle drawing, mine could appear there, even if they weren't specifically searching for spooky castle drawing. And maybe they're not searching for spooky castle drawing, and that drawing scares them, so they don't click. That's fine, but at least I appeared on search, and then that also is a factor of the search engine. So you're appearing more on search, Let's keep you appearing more in search. You're getting more clicks. Let's start ranking you more because you're getting clicks. It's kind of a vicious cycle, chicken or the egg. I want more hits, so I need more hits. I want more traffic, so I'll get more traffic through social media, through optimizing page by page, through free PDFs, through blogging, all of that stuff. It's a big ball of wax. Yes? So just to make sure I understand this, the, the focus keyword does not have the long tail search that could be no that could also that could be that could be the long tail as well in my particular case since I just chose this one off off the top of my head this is good enough for this one but I could apply the long tail keywords here too but most of the time you'll be applying that long tail in the description because that's where you've got the space for it Uh, mostly I've been doing it this way as in I think of like the shorter word here and then put the long tail in here that seems to be working and what's useful at th for this is that you know I just <clears throat> I just wrote what did I write first castle drawing and then it suggested these other ones spooky castle drawing and that happens to fit in with my motif for this site, for this page. So I took that suggestion. So when you have the plugin, it just gives you all of these different options below your blog post. Yes, that's going to appear below it in its own little WordPress SEO section. As I'm writing, based on my keyword, there's a few items here. Did you use it here, 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 and here? Now I have to have a caveat because this is always changing. This, SEO that is, not the plugin. SEO is always changing. This plugin is saying that so far this keyword is visible in my page title, but it's not in my address. The address of this particular one is simply enter. But what I'm getting at is that you don't need to get all of these to say yes, because at a certain point you are then keyword stuffing. This is the thing that I'm saying, it's a double-edged sword. So these are no at the moment, but notice also I know that I wrote those keywords in the meta description, why is it still saying no? Well, I need to either, if it lets you save or update, I need to update that little gray circle will then change. Now it's up to OK. 
I'm targeting OK and good. I'm targeting yellow and green. There's red, orange, yellow, green, and gray, which means we haven't started yet. The red one, I think, is bad. Then the orange one, I forget what. I think, oh, orange, I believe, is poor. Red is bad, orange is poor, yellow is okay, and green is good. I would go for yellow and green. You might not always be able to get green. I'll explain why in a moment. But you should be shooting for yellow and green. Unfortunately, sometimes you'll have to settle for poor. Because let's say on your home page, you've got a particular theme that is very graphics heavy, and there's no way for you to add extra text. You're going to have to settle for that to be, to be poor or bad, but plus the other seven pages that you've optimized, that'll offset the one page that is not okay or good. So the more of the pages of your site that you get to okay and good, the better. Now if I go back down, to the to the item here okay it still says that but under page analysis this is much more useful I have all of these greens is this specified meta in the specified meta description consider how does it compare to the competition the page title contains your keywords phrases you've never used this keyword this page has one outbound link so I've got a link to some other page the copy or the text scores 7.44 on the flesh reading ease test, which is considered easy to read. If you're writing complicated words for the sake of writing complicated words, it's hard to read. And therefore, again, the search engine sometimes takes things into account that you would think, really, they're going to ding me because my prose is too purple? Maybe, if no one's reading it. There's a good here on that your keyword is not in the address, but it's not so bad that you've always got it in the address. The page title contains 28 characters, which is less than recommended of 40. Well, I've got about 30 characters. That's only 10 characters off. Artistically, I want the title of my document to be called Enter. That's the name of my piece. I don't want to artificially call this my spooky castle drawing Enter. Again, now I'm keyword stuffing. I'm overusing the keywords. There are 205 words contained in the body, which is below 300. Well, 200 is close to 300. If I had 20 words in my title, obviously that's very bad. Not my title, my main body text. If I had 100, that's better. 200, that's better. 3 is even better. 500 is better. But depending on my content, I'm not going to artificially use up those words. My image does not contain the alt text. Keyword density is low. Those are in the in that range, and then quote unquote bad. The keyword doesn't appear in the first paragraph. You have not used your keyword in the heading in the headings. That's okay. Overall, with what I've done, I've gotten to okay. And as I'm saying, as long as you're at your OK, you've done a good job. If you get it, if you work more and get to good, better. But uh, in the totality of it all, if you spent the time to optimize your 27 pages up to OK, that's great. If most of them are still ungraded, or most of them are poor or bad, then you definitely need to work at that. So your first goal would be to get them to OK. If you're using some other website software, you might not have this handy SEO checker. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it. Not every platform has it. But following these ideas, using your keywords, your long tail keywords, in your title, in your description, in the content, that's a, that's a good you're on your way to optimizing your pages. Yes? I noticed one question. Under, uh, towards the right, if you scroll back, where is it? It is the... Okay, go up a little more. Okay, stop right there. Format. Standard. You have image. You, we focused a lot on the text mm -hmm. in the SEO. How come the image is selected? Not this has to do with um, partly to organize 
your content in WordPress, this particular image kind of, uh, this particular post kind of content focuses on an image, even though there's a lot of text, of course. So within the WordPress software, if I organize all my images together, that would make it easy for when someone is searching my site to find these images. So it's just another way to organize and categorize and such. You know, we've got categories and tags, but also we've got format. So the point of this is that I'm organizing my content and the search engines like that. You'd be fine if you always used standard or if you used, you know, if you use something else. I always use pictures, at least three or four pictures with text. Uh, but is the focus of that particular post the picture or the text? It's the picture, it's what I'm doing, and the text defines the picture. Then you're fine there. Um, same on mine here. Um, my, the focus of these blog posts are the pictures, so I'm going to put that to the format of picture. But also, I'm going to take advantage of using categories and tags. I haven't added tags yet, but I've put one category, and then I'll focus more on categories. But the point is organization. Organization in your blog is also important for SEO. So again, apologies. This class should be four weeks long, but we're almost at the end of the time. This is as far as I can talk about for this. Review the video um, to reinforce the concepts. I need to move on here because I also want to talk about what I said that usually at the end of the course what I do is I take people to volunteer their sites. If you'd like to, I'll pull up your site up on the screen here. I'll give you my opinions about it. If you have opinions, we can talk about it, and we will sort of, uh, you know, dissect your site and um, see if we find any glaring issues that you might address. Maybe because our time's running out, maybe spend two minutes or so max per person if you want to show off your item. But for the individual help and such, we'll try to have a little lab time. And we're just running out of time. So, are there any uh, people that would vol volunteer? Okay. Yes, many people. Okay, so we'll just go in order that I saw you. So uh, we can start here with yours. What was your address? K A T H L E E N. K A T H L E E N. It's Kathleen mm -hmm. Lina L Y N A G H dot me. I don't think I have any of those.